dear students to the massive open online course on money and financial markets. Today we are going to discuss about the structure of the Indian money market and today's module would be the first one of this series. The objective of this module would be to explore the objectives and functions of the money market along with giving an overview of the structure of the Indian money market. We all know that the money market is a key component of the financial system as it is the fulcrum of the monetary operations that are conducted by the central bank in its pursuit of the monetary policy objectives. It is also important because it is the market for all short term funds with maturity ranging from overnight to one year and includes financial instruments that are deemed to be close substitutes of money. And so in one word we can say that money market is a market for short term funds. Now we all know that a manufacturer he might need two types of finance. Number one finance to meet his daily expenses like purchase of raw materials, payment of wages etc. And also finance to meet his capital expenditures like purchase of machinery, installation of say pollution control equipments etc. Now in the in the first category of finance, we know that this investment is in the production process for a short period of time. The market where such short term finance is borrowed and linked is the market which is called the money market. Now almost every concern in the financial system be it a financial institution, a business firm, a corporation or a government or a government body they do have a recurring problem of liquidity management mainly because the timing of the expenditure rarely synchronizes with the timing of the receipts of funds. And the most important function of the money market then is to bridge this liquidity gap. Thus business and finance firms can tide over the mismatches of cash receipts and cash expenditures by purchasing or selling the shortfall or surplus of funds in the money market. The objectives of money market are as follows. Now we all know that the objective of the monetary management by the central bank is mainly to align the money market rates with the key policy rate like as excessive money market volatility could deliver confu confusing signals about the stance of the monetary policy and it is also critical to ensure orderly market behavior from both the viewpoint of monetary authorities and also from the viewpoint of financial stability. So one thing is clearly understood efficient functioning of markets is important for the effectiveness of monetary policy that the government or the central bank takes. So the main objective of money market is to cater to the requirement of borrowers for short term funds and provide liquidity to the lenders of these funds to provide a parking place for temporary employment of surplus funds to provide facility to overcome the short term deficits to enable the central bank to influence and regulate the liquidity in the market and also to help the government to implement its monetary policy through its various open market operations. Money market has also got diversified functions they perform three broad functions number one it provides an equilibrating mechanism for the demand and supply of short term funds number two it enables the borrowers and lenders for short term funds to fulfill their borrowing and investment requirements at an efficient market clearing price and number three it provides an avenue for the central bank intervention in influencing both the quantum and the cost of liquidity in the financial system thereby transmitting monetary policy impulses to the real economy. So in order to meet these basic functions effectively money market has evolved over time spanning new instruments and participants with varying risk profiles in line with the changes in the operating procedures of the monetary policy. 
changes in financial market structures, macroeconomic objectives and economic environment have called for a shift of the monetary regimes which in turn have necessitated refinements both in the operating instruments and procedures and in the institutional arrangements of the central bank. Next we come to the features of the money market. Money market has got no geographical constraints like that of a stock exchange. The financial institutions dealing in monetary assets may be spread over a wide geographical area. Even though there are various centers of money markets such as Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, etc., they are not separate independent markets but they are interlinked and interrelated. Uh, money market relates, relates to all dealings in money or monetary assets and it is a market purely, I repeat again, for short term funds. It is not a single homogeneous market. There are various sub markets in the money market like the call money market, the treasury bill market, etc. And money market do establish a link between the Reserve Bank of India and the banks and provide information of monetary policy and management. Transactions in this market can be done without the help of brokers and there are a variety of instruments that are used or are traded in this money market. Now if we look at the structure of the Indian money market, we find that it has, it basically consists of two segments. One is organized money market and the other is the unorganized money market. The RBI is the most important constituent of the Indian money market and we call it the organized sector. The organized sector of the money market is because it is within the direct purview of the regulations of the RBI. While the unorganized sector comprises of indigenous bankers, the money lenders and unregulated non-banking financial institutions. The organized sector consists of the RBI, the State Bank of India with its various associates of various commercial banks, other scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks, foreign banks and also the RRBs of the regional rural banks. As I have already said before, it is called an organized money market because it comes under the direct purview of the RBI. It is coordinated by the RBI. Non-banking financial institutions such as the Life Insurance Corporation, the General Insurance Corporation and its subsidiaries, the Unit Trust of India, all those used to operate in this market but only indirectly through banks. They were not able to operate directly. Quasi-government bodies and large companies also make their short-term surplus funds available to the organized market through banks. Cooperative credit institutions occupy the intermediary position between the organized segment and the unorganized segment of the money market. These institutions have a three-tiered structure. At the top, there are the state cooperative banks. At the local level, there are the primary credit societies and urban cooperative banks. Considering the size, methods of operation and dealings with the RBI and the commercial banks, only the state and central cooperative banks should be included in the organized sector. The cooperative societies at the local level are loosely related to it, so they cannot be, they cannot be broadly considered under the organized sector of the money market. We now come into the sub markets of the organized money market. Now the organized money market can be classified into various sub markets. They are the call and notice money market, the treasury bill market, the commercial bill market, the market for certificate of deposits, the market for commercial papers, the repo market, the money market mutual funds and the discount and finance house of India. Firstly, we now look at the call and notice money market. Under the call money market, the funds are transacted on overnight basis. Under notice money market, funds are transacted from the period of 2 days and 14 days. The funds lent in the notice money market do not have a specified repayment date when the deal is made. The lender issues a notice to the borrower 2 to 3 days before the funds are to be paid. On receipt of this notice, the borrower will have to repay the funds within the given period of time. Generally, banks rely on the call money market where they raise funds for a single day. The main participants in the call money market are commercial banks excluding the regional rural banks, the cooperative banks and the primary dealers, the non-banking financial institutions such as LIC, GIC, UTI, NABAD, etc. They are all allowed to participate in the call money market as lenders. 
Now, the Indian coal money market has got certain features which are very peculiar to it. In the Indian coal money market, they provide the institutional arrangement for making temporary surplus of some banks available to other banks which are temporary in short term funds. Mainly, the banks participate in the coal money market. The State Bank of India is always on the lender side of the market. The coal money market operates through brokers who always keep in touch with the banks and establishes a link between the borrowing and the lending banks. The call money market is highly sensitive and a competitive market. So it is a best indicator of the liquidity position of the organized money market. The rate of interest in the call money market is highly unstable. It quickly rises under pressure of excess demand for funds and also quickly falls under pressure of excess supply of funds. The call money market also plays a vital role in removing the day-to-day -day fluctuations in the reserve position of the individual banks and improves the functioning of the banking system in the country. Next we go to the next sub market that is a treasury bill market. Treasury bills are short term securities issued by RBI on behalf of the government of India and they are the main instruments of short term borrowing by the government and they are very very useful in managing the short term liquidity. At present the government of India mainly issues three types of treasury bills through auctions namely 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. There are no treasury bills issued by the state governments. With the introduction of the auction system, interest rates on all types of treasury bills are being determined by the market forces. However, there are certain points that needs to be noted. The treasury bill market in India is highly underdeveloped as compared to the treasury bill market in the UK and the USA. In the UK and USA, the treasury bills are the most important money market instruments. On the contrary, when we look at the Indian treasury bill market, we see that there are no dealers except the Reserve Bank of India. Besides the RBI, some treasury bills are held by commercial banks, state government and semi-government bodies. But these treasury bills are not popular with the non-banking financial institutions, the corporations and the individuals mainly because of the absence of a developed treasury bill market. If we look at the treasury bill market of UK and USA, we find that the treasury bills there provides a risk-free, profitable and highly liquid investment outlet for short-term surpluses of various financial institutions. In those countries, treasury bills form an important source of raising fund for the government and also for the central bank, the treasury bills were the main instruments of open market operations. Next we come to the next sub market which is called the commercial bill market. The commercial bill is a short term negotiable and self liquidating instrument with very low risk. They are negotiable instruments drawn by a seller on the buyer for the value of goods that are delivered by him and such bills are basically called trade bills. When trade bills are accepted by the commercial banks, they are then called commercial bills. If the seller gives some time for payment, the bill will be payable at a future date, that is the date from the issuance of the bill. Generally, the maturity period is up to 90 days. During the issuance period, if the seller is in need of funds, he may approach his bank for discounting his bill. The commercial banks can provide credit to the customers by discounting the commercial bills brought to them and the banks can re-discount the commercial bills any number of times during the issuance period of bill and get money. The next sub market that we come to is the certificate of deposits. They are unsecured negotiable promissory notes, they are issued at a discount to their face value and they are issued by the commercial banks and the developing financial institutions. They are also marketable receipts of funds deposited in a bank for a period of time, fixed period of time at a specified rate of interest. In India, the certificate of deposits were introduced in June 1989 and the main purpose of the scheme was to enable the commercial banks to raise funds from the market through the certificate of deposits. 
According to the original scheme, the certificate of deposits were issued in multiples of 25 lakhs subject to the minimum size of an issue being 1 crore. They had a maturity period of around 3 months to 1 year and they were freely transferable but only after the lock-in period of 45 days after the date of the issue of the deposit. The commercial paper is an unsecured money market instrument issued in the form of promissory note with fixed maturity. They indicate the short term obligation of an issuer and they are quite safe and highly liquid. They are generally issued by the leading nationally reputed highly rates and credit worthy large manufacturing and finance companies in the public as well as in the private sector. In India, the commercial papers were introduced in January 1990 and they were launched in India with a view to enable highly rated corporate borrowers to diversify their sources of short term borrowers and also to provide an additional instrument to the investors. RBI has modified its original scheme in order to widen the market for the commercial papers. Corporates and primary dealers and all India financial institutions can issue these papers. A corporate can issue the co uh, commercial papers provided they fulfill certain conditions. Number A, the tangible net worth of the company should not be less than 4 crores. Number B, the company should have been sanctioned working capital limit by banks or all India financial institutions and C, the borrowed amount of the, the borrowed account of the company is classified as a standard asset by the financial institution or bank. We next come to the next sub market, the repos. Now a repo or reverse repo is a transaction in which two parties agree to sell and repurchase the same security. Under repo, the seller gets immediate funds by selling specified securities with an agreement to repurchase it at a mutually decided future date and price. Similarly, the buyer purchases the securities with an agreement to resell the same to the seller at an agreed date and price. The repos in the government securities were first introduced in India in December 1992. Since November 1996, the RBI has also introduced the reverse repos that is to sell government securities through auction. Next we come to the discount and finance house of India which is DFHI which was set up by the RBI in April 1988 with the objective of deepening and activating the money market. It is jointly owned by the RBI, the public sector banks and all India financial institutions which have contributed to paid up capital. The DFHI deals in treasury bills, in commercial bills, in certificate of deposits, in commercial papers, short term deposits, call money market and the government securities. The presence of DFHI as an intermediary in the money market has helped the corporate entities, the banks and the financial institutions to invest their short term surpluses in various money market instruments. We also have another type of sub market which is called the money market mutual funds. RBI introduced these money market mutual funds in April 1992 to enable the small investors to participate in the money market. The money market mutual funds mobilizes savings from the small investors, invest them in short term debt instruments or in the money market instruments such as the call money, the repos, the treasury bills, the certificate of deposits and the commercial papers. And these instruments are forms of debts that mature in less than a year. We next focus our attention to the unorganized money market. The unorganized money market is largely made up of indigenous banks, money lenders and the unregulated non-banking financial intermediaries and they do operate in urban centers but their activities are largely confined in the rural areas. This market is unorganized because it does not come under the purview of the RBI and we have here as I said the indigenous bankers, the money lenders, the unregulated non-banking financial institutions, intermediaries like cheat funds, nidhis and loan companies and also finance brokers. 
Now, what are the indigenous bankers? Indigenous bankers are financial intermediaries which operates as banks, receive deposits and give loans and deals in hundis. The hundi is a short term credit instrument. It is an endogenous or um, in other words you can call it, it is an indigenous bill of exchange. The rate of interest differs from one market to another and from one bank to another and they do not depend on deposits entirely, they may also use their own funds. Money lenders on the other hand are those whose primary business is lending money. Money lenders you find rampant in villages and they are also found in the urban areas. Their interest rates are generally exorbitantly high. Large amount of loans are given for generally unproductive purposes. The borrowers are mainly the agricultural laborers, small and marginal farmers, artisans, factory workers, small traders, etc. The unregulated non-banking financial intermediaries mainly consist of the cheat funds, the nidhis, the loan companies and others. Cheat funds are savings institutions. The members make regular contribution to the fund. The collected fund is given to some member based on some previously agreed criterion and it can be done by beads or by draw and cheat fund is mainly found in India in the states of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Nidhis are basically deal with members and act as mutual benefit funds. The deposits from the members are the major source of the funds in this case and they make, they make loans to the members at reasonable rate of interest for the purpose like say house construction or repair. They are highly localized and they are peculiar to South India. Both cheat funds and nidhis are unregulated. And lastly, we have the finance brokers. They are found in all major urban markets, especially in the cloth markets, the grain markets and the commodity markets. They are middlemen between the lenders and the borrowers. So, at the end of this uh, uh, module, we really learn about the various types of uh, various types of agents or the types of markets that are available in the Indian money market and we have seen that how there is a thriving of both the organized money market and the unorganized money market and within the organized money market segment there is a huge number of subcategories also of the organized money market.